Hi, Mike Mays here. This is another recording in this series of topics relating math to the Scratch programming language, kind of inspired by and motivated by this upcoming book, Math Hacks for Scratch, that'll be out from No Starch Press this summer. Uh, what the book is all about is ways to use Scratch to answer questions about math and ways to use math to make Scratch programming more, uh, more powerful. So the topic that I'm going to talk about today is one that I've done once before, but I'm going to take a different tack on it, so uh, just to see how it might look. Now, my idea is that it is uh, something that is built into another computer language called Perl. They're very proud with the language Perl that uh, it's a very flexible language and there are lots of ways to do things. And so they have for their little motto uh, phrase, they, they call it Tim Toady, T-I-M-T-O-W-T-D-I, uh, pronounced Tim Toady. Sounds like it could be a character in Lord of the Rings, but it is an acronym, and it stands for this philosophy about the Perl language. There is more than one way to do it. They're happy to have so many tools that you have flexibility in deciding how to do it. And that's kind of what I'm going to do um, in this. We talked once before when we were drawing a star, and I did it using the turtle graphics built in of Scratch, where you just tell it, draw a line so far, then turn and draw and turn and draw, and you could draw a, a star that way. What I'd like to do today is to go at it from the point of view of trigonometry and figuring out how to draw a star using all the built-in trig functions that Scratch supports. So here's the, the, math, the geometry background. Remember that the stage, the, the area where the Scratch cat moves and you draw things, is a rectangle that is 480 uh, pixels wide and a 360 pixels tall. And the coordinates in here are such, such that you go from minus 240 to 240 in the x direction and from minus 180 to 180 in the y direction with the center, the point with the coordinate 0, 0 right in the middle. So the star that I'll try to draw, I will base in the middle of that, that the stage, and I'll do it by putting it inside a circle. And the circle relative to the coordinates of the stage ought to be um, maybe, maybe 150 uh, units in radius. So from the center, 150 units uh, left, right and left, and 150 units uh, down and up to get uh, what that circle would look like. And now I'll think about drawing the star inside that circle. Well, it fits in to uh, the, a, a, a pentagon, and the angles that I'm going to need to work with, I will set up using uh, trig functions. So the, the trig functions, sine and cosine, are so that when you've got an angle in, in this circle, the angle, the point on the coordinates are where the x and the y coordinates are given by the cosine of the angle and the sine of the angle. It is for a unit circle, it would be just times one. If we're going to do this circle with radius 150, then 150 times cosine for the x coordinate of this point and 150 times sine of the angle for the y coordinate. So now we've got the pentagon that we're going to draw inside here, the relevant angles are going to be, well, the pentagon, uh, if I think about splitting the around to get uh, to the vertices, there would be five uh, angles around here, equal sized, and 360 degrees. Each one would be 360 divided by five, so 72 degrees. And the other thing that I'm going to need is that the the vert going to the vertical, this would be 90 degrees. If that was 72 degrees, the extra little bit to get it up, rotate it up to this, this first vertex that I'll be after is 18 degrees. So the magical numbers to remember are 72 degrees and 18 degrees. And we're going to build some, uh, some 
coordinates and plot some lines with the geometry of the Pentagon in mind. So, so 72 degrees from this vertex to this vertex, two vertexes over from here, all the way over to here, double that angle. So two times 72, 144, three times 72, four times 72, five times 72 gets me back to where I started. So now let's do the scratch to make this stuff happen. So I'm going to be drawing lines. I'm going to be letting my sprite draw the lines for me. I don't care if scratch cat's so big. Let me go ahead and shrink him. I'll make his size go from 100 to 10. And now I've got a little tiny scratch cat here. That's just fine for dragging a line around. Now, remember, we, we talked once already about how uh, the line commands work in Scratch. There is a set of commands for that. And if I go here to uh, opening up my options, this is this extensions of Scratch. And the pen extension gives me a new collection of menu items here, which will let me draw uh, on my stage. So the way that we draw, uh, I'll make a block, draw, call it block name line. So I'll use uh, the pen commands to draw a line. I'm going to draw a line from a point with coordinates x1, y1, to a point with coordinates x2 and y2. And my line command is going to be to, for the motion, go to a point with particular coordinates, x1, y1, put the pin down, and now when I move, it's going to drag the pin along and draw the pin, so I'll go to x2, y2. I've drawn that line. So I'll put the pin up. So very simple little custom block that will let me draw a line. And now I'd like to draw appropriate lines. I'm going to draw the five lines that will give me a, a star. I'm going to expect to see like two, 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 two. Like five, five lines here to make a five-pointed star. And what should they be? Well, let's set it up as a little program. So We'll get started when I click my flag. And maybe a good thing to do would be to do a little bit of housekeeping. I'll erase all so that I've got a clean stage to work from. I'll set the pin size to be one, so I'm drawing a nice tight little line. And now I have to draw five uh, strokes, five lines to give me my five pointed star. So I will start by, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna need a loop. I'm going to count around the loop by seeing which, which line that I'm on. So I'll make a variable i that would do that. And set i to be 0. So that I'm starting at uh, an, an initial value. And now I'm going to repeat five times to draw the five lines that are going to be my five-pointed star. And what's that going to look like? Well, I'm thinking about uh, some coordinates. Maybe the easiest way would be to set up some variables so I'm keeping track of what my variables are going to be for where I'm starting and stopping. And I'll, I'll label the variables what I had for the placeholders in my line block. X1, Y1. X2 and Y2. I don't need them to show. I don't need them to show in the stage, so let me go ahead and uncheck those. They don't need to be there. They're going to just do the work just fine if I don't don't see them. And now the trick is going to be to set them to be a value 
that's going to be uh, based on that trigonometry. So cosine and sine. I will set x1 to be, and since I'm scaling this by 500, I'll do, or by, by 150, I will do 150 times, and all this, these functions that Scratch makes available, one of them is cosine, cosine of, and now I is going to be a count for what angle we're at, how far around we're going to go. So we're going to do multiples of 72 for the, for the angles of the Pentagon. So 72 times I. So x1 is 150 times the cosine of 72 times i. So when i is 0, it's going to be the cosine of 0. So it's going to start uh, at that value. Now we'll do another one. y1 to be the same thing, except it's sine. And now we need x2 and y2. And what's different about them is the angle is going to skip around two, two steps around the vertices of the pentagon. So instead of being times i, I want to skip two vertices over from that. It's going to be I plus 2. I plus 2. So for Y2, it's going to be this expression. Instead of I, though, it's I plus 2. And for Y2, it's that expression with the I plus 2 in it, but this time it's sine. So that looks good. Now we just have to draw our line from X1 y1 to x2, y2. That's the first line that we draw with i is 0. And now we want to we want to change i to, to be the next value along and then go through this calculation again to get the next line in the square. So I will change i by 1. Now let's see if that works. When I click this, it's going to draw a square. Looks pretty good. And the only thing about that's about, about a, a square, I said, a star. The only thing about that star is that compared to the original version that I had uh, drawn the the other other version the it was lined up like straight across so that this this stroke was horizontal instead of having this stroke be vertical so i'd like to rotate this star 18 degrees remember that was the other magic number to make it so that it lines up uh with with this stroke being horizontal so the trick for doing that is to replace this angle, cosine of 72 plus i, that stuff is okay, except I need to move it by 18 degrees before I do that. So let's put in 18 plus 72 plus i. It looks like that.
it looks like that. Look at how this is this part way through. It's screwing up my my picture. That's okay. Well, let's see. I've got still have a star I. So this isn't the way I want it to be. I want it to be 18 plus 72 times I. There. That looks better. So that's what it looks like for that. And now we want the same expression here and it didn't go in right want the same expression there except instead of I I want it to be I plus two because this is where we're, we're getting the second vertex and having it over there. And now 18 plus 70, that, that, that whole thing goes. I'm not getting it the right place. Let's try one more time. That looks good. So all we've done is taken the original recipe for uh, sine and cosine of I and I plus two and just add it 18 degrees all the way around. So that's going to rotate it. Now let's see if we've got that just right. Let's try clicking the star and there's that, there's the star, the five pointed star rotated 18 degrees around. So it's lined up just right. So this is a, a whole different way of drawing a star. It's no more, I don't know if it's any easier. It just uses a different uh, mathematical toolkit. We've got these trig functions built in that tell me about coordinates. And that's, that's the approach rather than a recipe where we draw and turn and draw and turn. So uh, just Tim Toady, right? Another way to do it. And that's the Scratch Project for today. Thanks for listening.